Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. My name is Lee Editor Martin Krima. Joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Now, Pan African's Mohale Tailings Retreatment Project is ahead of schedule and below budget. Yes, you know, you travel out to the West Rand, uh, part of Gauteng province, the province of gold, and you get towards Krugersdorp and Mohale, and you see those tailings dumps. And you realize, well, there's gold there. <laughs> and it's, it was great that uh, Pan-African, which is listed in London and Johannesburg, you know, focused on that. They do extract gold elsewhere in the same way, so their experience in tailings is very good. And they needed to apply it here. And they've applied it so well, you know, that they are below budget, ahead of schedule, which is fantastic for South Africa because the, we know there's gold there, so there's wealth there. But we also know that environmentally, these things must go. We know that when they go, they create a lot of space for so many other things in property. It could be factories, it could be homes, it could be all sorts of things that could be developed there. But they also produce a residue. And you take that residue and you put it into the underground mines. Because those mines are very dangerous the way they are. You can't have those cavities there. I know that you know they, they get, the, the tunnels get smaller and smaller. But you want to fill them in totally because you know that some people are tempted to go down there. We call them zama zamas, and it's hugely dangerous. And we see it's not only dangerous from an underground point of view, but there's fighting on surface. So it's wonderful that this is going ahead. And it's going to be low cost because they're doing it at something like below $900 an ounce. And when you look at the gold price at record levels now, I mean, really, it's a good project. And also good news from Sylvania Platinum. Its new tailings project is also on track for the first half of 2025. Again, you know, you see these tailings projects go ahead seemingly faster than mining projects. And you start asking the people, well, why is this? And they say, well, you know, you don't have to go through the Department of Mineral Resources. Uh, really, this is terrible. So you go through uh, different departments mm -hmm. to get permission to go ahead to extract value out of these tailings dumps. Now, Sylvania has been doing this a long time, but they've normally concentrated a lot on platinum group metals and recovering platinum group metals. But they're also diversifying now into chrome. And you see that on the western limb of the bushveld at a time when the chrome price is good and the platinum price is not good. So it makes a lot of sense. And it's not only a single project that they're looking at. There are a lot of projects that they are working on there. And again, it's, it's good for the environment. It's good for the economy. There's nothing bad about it. Mm -hmm. Lastly, why was Marafe's ferrochrome output down 17%? Yes, you know, the market is not in a favorable position at the moment. The price of our electricity is so high. So, you know, you're sitting and watching an industry again that was massive. You know, the ferrochrome industry, it took chrome and it added value several times. And it did so in a period when electricity pricing was competitive. So it expanded. We took the world market. All of a sudden, you know, it makes you quite concerned when a state enterprise like Eskim, you know, causes prices to rise so high that you lose exports. Now, I think it... <laughs> When we get the time, we should really investigate who was to blame for all that because they are seriously to blame for economic backwardization, people getting hurt, the gap between the rich and the poor greater because of what they've done. So it's terrible. But in, in reality now, you find that they don't reopen a smelter because the market isn't favorable. You also find that the gap was filled by China. So China gets a lot of our chrome now. Most of the ferrochrome that China produces is from chrome sourced from South Africa. So they have taken that value-added market. And you want to call to account those people who stood up and said, South Africa must beneficiate. Those were the same people that caused the price of electricity to go up. And you wonder, do they actually know anything? <laughs> you know, And certainly we hope that this new government has a better insight into what happens when you don't perform. 
Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.